Hello, I'm Kuljit Bamra, and I'm someone who enjoys asking questions about things. Now, the reason I'm saying that is because in traditional learning of tabla, it's not always easy to ask questions from your teacher or your guruji because uh, it's sort of considered inappropriate and the uh, premises that you just do as he or she says. I don't know if any of you have seen um, The Karate Kid. Uh, it's a bit like wax on, wax off. So you just keep doing that without questioning anything. Most likely, if I was uh, somebody who wanted to learn to play tabla, I would find a teacher, a guruji or an ustad, and I would become part of um, their entourage or their, their group of students and become one of the disciples. And uh, then I would be taught to play tabla in a traditional way. Sit on the floor, cross-legged, um, memorize my talas, learn my rhythmical cycles, um, memorize gaida, improvisational patterns, uh, memorize dihais, and just continue that um, mentorship program with my teacher until I became like them. Now, the goal of that traditional learning is to become a virtuosic improviser, just like um, your teacher or like the great maestros. Now, if you were somebody who didn't want to do that, and I'm not saying that's a bad thing uh, either way, say you just wanted to add them to your drum kit and you wanted to do it in your own way, I think it would be very difficult to find a teacher who would support you in that. There's no room or scope or encouragement for people to play it in perhaps another way, in a way that they would prefer. There is a, a myth that that is the only and the best way to learn to play tabla. When I think of traditional ways of playing, I would argue strongly that folk music is more traditional than classical music. And if you travel to other countries, I mean, even in England, when you talk about traditional music, people normally think you're talking about folk, trad music. The classical sides of things is uh, another genre altogether. So again, the words are getting mixed up, but the point I'm making is that there seems to be only one route and rigidly only one route that is promoted by the teachers if you wanted to learn to play tabla. Many people call these tablas traditional tabla. Surely the idea of calling these traditional tabla is really a way of making them symbolic of our tradition and our culture. Now, let me ask you a question. I am living in England. I have Indian heritage. And am I Indian or am I British? Um, I know uh, there are many comments on my YouTube channel um, and some people say, my dear, you are Indian. <laughs> uh, also, uh, when we launched Dabla Touch, I had an email from somebody that said, um, we are very proud of you. You have invented this amazing instrument and you're Indian, so we're very proud of you. And then the next day I received another message from someone saying, British people always stealing our ideas. <laughs> now, now, which one am I? Am I... Indian or British, I am not asking that as a question that needs an answer because I enjoy being both of those. I can speak English, as you can tell, and I can suddenly switch into Punjabi or a bit of Hindi if I wish to. And I enjoy having um, a foot in each of those worlds and being able to step in and out of those two worlds. And I think that's something that's really beautiful about living in Britain is that we have all those cultures living side by side. And perhaps if you're someone who's living in India, for example, you may not um, experience an opportunity to step outside and see how other people view things. One obvious example that I can tell you is that uh, if, I, if I'm in India, if I say the word tabla, everybody knows what I'm talking about. And if I told people, which I do in India, I tell my friends in England, not everybody knows what a tabla, they don't know what a tabla is. Everybody knows what a tabla is. No, that's not true. If I walk down Oxford Street in London and ask 100 people, I will do this one day, 
But if I ask 100 people, do you know what a tabla is? I think maybe five might know. I also want to underline um, the fact that I'm, I, I don't intend to have uh, a dig at traditional music, nor have I got anything against traditional music or classical music, and I've played with many well-known classical artists. But by definition, tradition implies that things stay the same. And many of us want things to stay the same. As human beings, we don't really like change. Um, and so traditional music seems to be the thing that has anchored uh, tabla playing around the world. And at the same time, I think it limits the scope of what is available with tabla. I know that may sound uh, silly or stupid to many people, but um, the whole point of music is to create something and also to develop your own uh, personal expression of music if you are a creator yourself. So I'm not saying we suddenly stop playing uh, traditional music in that way and start changing it. No, it's just um, an idea to make us explore things further. And innovation and tradition, they go together, you know, they're two sides of the same coin. Um, those of us that call this a traditional tabla, well, you can carry on doing that if you wish, but this black paste was invented by somebody. It used to be made of dough, and then it became a compound, a very clever compound that produces this amazing tone. These gutte and these straps and the construction, the tapered nature of the drum, these things were all invented. They were innovations at that time and with time have become what we call traditional. So things have to keep changing um, as well as staying the same. They go together. But it seems to me that we are strangling ourselves by being over prescriptive and forcing people to play in a particular way when perhaps they could take um, the tabla on their own journey to bigger and wider audiences around the world. And that's what makes me very excited. Thank you very much for watching and I look forward to seeing you soon.